Hey guys, I just wanted to make a little mail day video. Uh, I know I haven't posted much in the past couple weeks, but that doesn't mean that I haven't had a lot of good stuff coming in, and I just wanted to show it off to everyone. Um, I first view myself as a Cal Ripken collector, and second, a 90s to early 2000s collector, so... If you're watching this from the 90s group, then fast forward a few minutes if you don't want to see any modern day stuff, but you might even appreciate some of this stuff that I'm about to show off, because I think it's pretty cool. So, let's get started with it. Here is a 2008 Ballpark Collection Upper Deck 8-card um, swatch. Um, this has got Griffey, Ripken, Ozzy Smith, Reggie Jackson on it. Uh, I think Ripken got the good side of this. So on the back, we got Santana, Longoria, Teixeira, and Beckett. Uh, I think it's just pretty cool because it has eight different players on it. Um, it's right next to Griffey. Sorry about the dust. Right next to Griffey, right next to Smith, and Jackson, too. So I think that's a pretty sweet one. Next is a really nice one. Is the lustrous 2007 Upper Deck Black. Uh, this card is... Actually, see-through acetate. It's a double jersey card. Autographed. Uh, number 9 out of 10. I believe this is 2007. I believe it glows in the dark. I've never actually tried it. So I might tonight. <laughs> Next is a really rare one that I picked up for a lot cheaper than I thought I would. So... This is an 1882 Topps Ripken Rookie, pretty standard basic card. Um, but on the back, it is actually the wrong back printed. So it's Rance Mullinicus on the back. Um, I've only seen one other of these a couple years back, and I actually grabbed it. I had no intention of really picking this one up, but the uh, seller offered me such a good deal on it, I couldn't pass it up. So if anyone's looking for one, let me know. Next is a 2006 Ultimate Tandem Materials, Jeter and Ripken, numbered out of 35. This is a pretty sweet patch from Ripken. The Jeter patch is a little basic, but anytime you get these two on a card together, I think it's pretty awesome. I think the Ultimate Collection really did it right through 2006 to 2009, right before they closed up shop. Um... They had some really nice patch cards. They had some really nice autograph combination cards. Like it's just kind of a classy set all around throughout the years. Here's another Ultimate Collections card. Let's see, uh, Ultimate Collection Dual Materials autograph Ripken and Gwyn, numbered seven out of ten. It's got some slight chipping around here, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I can look past it because the rest of the card is <laughs> the rest of the card is really nice. So. I don't mind that too much. Next, I have a 2005 Upper Deck Trilogy. I really love the look of this card. This is also clear acetate. Numbered out of 75. Uh, bat jersey combo with the autograph on it. As you can see, my finger right through there. It's a really thick, really thick card. It's got a really good look to it. Next is a set I've been kind of trying to put together. I'm not a huge fan of tiered cards. Um, triple threads is the worst with the tier, different tiered cards. So, like they have the twenty number to twenty seven, number thirty six, the exact same cards. But for some reason these. The triple thread golds have really struck a chord with me. I really love them. Just the look. And they're only numbered out of nine. So I've been picking up a bunch of Ripkins lately. I think I have about six or seven. This is my favorite one. It's got the base, the bat, and his pants, and the autograph. <laughs> There's only nine out there, so it's it's pretty cool. It's just got a beautiful refractor shine to it. I really like that. Next is... Another Ultimate Collection. I've really been on Ultimate Collection tear because, I mean, like I said, these are really great-looking cards. 
Uh, this is the Ultimate Collection Ultimate Ensemble Materials, numbered at a 20. This patch is actually very similar to the other patch of Ripken. Like you can see that there. And you have, it's very similar. And then you get Tahada and Jeter again. Um, just an overall clean looking card. Numbered 16 out of 20. And this one is from 2000, 2006. I wish they could have put A-Rod or Nomar on there instead, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. It's a really nice card anyway. And this one, I got kind of guilt-tripped into buying from another member, Ripken Collector, and who's also in the 90s group, Will. He posted this card, and I got to take it out of the case just to show it off because it's so nice. He posted his version of this card, and I thought it was awesome, so I had to go get one myself. This is a 2005 Playoff Prime Cuts, or 2008, I'm sorry, Playoff Prime Cuts quad jersey card of Ripken, Lou Gehrig, Jackie Robinson, Mike Schmidt. Um, I never had any Gehrig or Robinson game use stuff, so I was really pumped to get this one. Uh, it's numbered at a 25. Show you on the back. This case all scratched up. That's why I took the front off. But the card is in good shape. If anyone wants to send me a whole bunch of free pro molds, brand new, uh, I won't complain. But until then, you gotta suffer with a few scratch cases here and there. All right, now on to the '90s stuff that I've picked up. First is a 1998 Donruss signature proof card. This is numbered out of 150. This is the checklist version. These are kind of sneaky tough to get. I mean, anything out of 98 numbered to 150 is... You know, it was still hard to come by. It's got a little refractor shine. Nothing, nothing too crazy on it, but I like it. Next couple I was able to pick up off of Barry. Uh, this is the 1997 New Pinnacle the green artist proof. The East Meets West. Um, he's got three different cards in this. In this new pinnacle uh, run, he's got one with Roberto Alomar on it. Uh, the green ones, the green artist proof in this set were the hardest to come by. There was red and blue ones as well, but the 25 best players that they viewed as the best players in the set got the green artist proof. And then the, I believe the green, I mean the uh, the blue were the next toughest, and the red were the easiest to come by. Next is another one I grabbed the off of Barry. Uh, this one's one I've been avoid avoiding for a while because I've never been able to get it for the right price. It's nothing flashy. Uh, it's a Pacific Cup from a two thousand Crown Collection. Uh, these are numbered one out of every 721 packs, which is a really tough pull. With the toughest pull in the Pacific collection, it's right on par with, you know, with the uh, Kramer's Choice, but nowhere near the flash, nowhere near the niceness. I picked up a Griffey version of this for five bucks, <laughs> like four or five months ago, so it was hard to justify paying an overly big amount for this one. But it's nice to get this off the uh, get this off the checklist. Another one I think is a little bit nicer is 1999 Aurora uh, Pennant Fever. This is the blue version, the Pennant Fever blue. The copper version, I believe, is out of 20. This one is out of 100. This is 99 out of 100. Um, it's a nice looking card. Nothing overly special, but I always liked anything that Anything Pacific Blue is right up my alley. Next is one of the toughest pull odds of any card from the early 2000s. This is a uh, dual bat Tony Gwynn, Cal Ripken, Farewell Tribute card out of 2001 Tops Traded. This one was one out of every 4,693 packs to pull. Which is crazy odds. This is the only one 
in the set. But like I said, those are absolutely incredible odds. Anything from tops was really tough to pull for some reason back in the late 90s, early 2000s for game use stuff. They didn't have anything overly flashy, but for some reason they were really tough pulls. Next is a 1997 Platinum Press Proof Donner Signature Series of Ripken. I really like the shine on this. This is an overall cool card. The action photo is not the greatest, but in terms of style and design like, and shine, I really like this one. It's also numbered out of 150. Next, I got in a trade from Chuck. This is a uh, 2000 Upper Deck Evolve, the autograph version. I have the game used jersey version and the jersey auto version, so this completes that run. So these cards were pulled. Uh, they had redemption cards that you had to go online and type in a code. And if you had a winning code, then you could redeem it for you know, either the autograph, the game used, or both. So this is the autograph version hand numbered out of 200. Next is a really tough card to acquire actually. Not too many people know about it. 1997 Select Artist Proof Blue. Uh, these were one out of every 355 packs to pull a blue version. I think 50 players out of this set were blues. So this one's really hard to come by. Uh, the reds were one out of every 71 packs, but these artist proofs were extremely tough. Next is a 2000 Revolution The Shadow Series. <laughs> I love the look of this card. They went way over the top with these, but I love this one and the red versions equally is great. Even the base version of this is really cool. This one's numbered out of 99. 78 out of 99. Another one. Next one is 1999 Pacific Invincible. The Platinum Blue. Uh, I really like the design of this card. I always like the uh, acetate circles that the players were in. This is numbered out of 67. 34 out of 67. I also got this one from Barry as well. Next is my first Legacy collection, which is shocking, but for some reason I just haven't been able to, I just haven't acquired any of the Legacy collections in the past. Uh, this is the 1999 Row 2. It's a really cool looking card. You know, the base versions are equally as nice, except they don't have the Legacy collection stamp on it. It is numbered 69 out of 99 up there. I might try to complete the run one day. Uh, it's a pretty daunting task. These cards have shot up in price over the years. I wish I'd started the hunt earlier, but maybe one day I'll keep pursuing it. Next is 1999 Upper Deck Faces the Game. This is the die cut version. Uh, really awesome card. Uh, I don't really like the base version of this, but for some reason that die cut just turns into a completely different card. And this one is numbered out of 100. 86 out of 100. Next is two different cards. I'm going to show them off at the same time. The uh, 1999 Topps Tech Gold. Uh, this is the side A and this is side B. Um, each card had 30 different versions of this. Uh, they're numbered out of 10. But I'm never going to try to pursue all 30 different versions, so I'm happy with these two versions. And they're really nice looking cards, they really are. They really shine, they got the great refractor and gold look to them, which I really love. Um, but I am happy with just two versions, I'm not trying to complete all 60 versions of these. Even going after the base set would be a very daunting task. Next is a 1998, sorry. Kramer's Choice, this is the uh, emerald version, numbered out of 99. Uh, the gold version just sold for right around $600, numbered out of 15, just last week. So these have been seeing a good influx in price lately. I was able to get this one at a decent price, but 
Ah, it's a nice looking card. I I have come around more and more to the Kramer's Choice <laughs> than I was in the past. Next is a 1999 Fleer Brilliance. This isn't the 24 karat gold, but it is still a beautiful card. Just gold all the way through the rainbow refractor finish on the lettering. Uh, just a beautiful card all the way around. I'd love to see what the 24 karat gold looks like in hand. These are still very rare. I mean, numbered out of 99. So, they are still very hard to come by. Next, we have a really awesome looking one. It is a 2001 logo patch card of Ripken. Uh, it has a Jackie Robinson swatch inside of it. I mean, this is as cool as they come in terms of in terms of patches. I was able to score this one. You know, it cost me a little bit, but I really like the look of that patch. You don't see very many that came out like that. Next is another super rare one I was able to get off my checklist. It is the 1998 Precious Metal Gems. I'm sorry, the 1999 version. Precious Metal Gems, caught on the fly, Rip, Ripken. Um, look at that awesome shine. <laughs> this one's pretty cool. Obviously, numbered out of 50. Just a beautiful card. Next is one I sh picked up about two months ago. Um, is the 1999... Skybox Premium Rubies. And this one is... Look at that. Awesome shine. A really cool looking card in hand. Uh, numbered out of 50. 43 out of 50. Very desirable card in this modern day. Next is one of my... I mean, I these next four are ones that I've been looking to pick up. You know, for the past couple of years. Uh, well, this one is the 1993 Topps Finest Refractor. Uh, not much to say about this one other than this is probably my favorite card of all time. Just because this is where the set started. This is where Rare Insert started back in 93. It's just an absolutely stunning card. You, everyone knows the history of these, so I don't really need to go into them very much. Other than I had one back a couple years ago and was able to finally get one back into my collection. And for the final three, I, as many of you know, I'm a huge Epics. 1998 Epics is my favorite set. Um, so I was able to pick up these three. These are the unreleased versions. These are the game versions. These are the ones that were supposed to be in Pinnacle Certified that were never released to the public. So there can, there's only, I'd say, you know, a handful, maybe three or four copies of these floating around in existence. They're just absolutely stunning cards. I've had my eye on these for a long time and was finally able to pull the trigger. They cost me an arm and a leg, but, I mean, this is, <laughs> no pun intended, but the pinnacle of, you know, my collecting up until now. I am so excited to have these to finish off that full pinnacle run. And here's the emerald version of that. I'll post all of them together in a picture just to show off the whole set as one. Um, but, yeah. I am super pumped to have these back in, or in my collection, because I don't know the next time I'd see one of these pop up, and I'm glad to have the full run of these now. So thanks for tuning in to my pretty awesome mail day, <laughs> or at least I think so anyway, um, and hopefully I'll be able to make another video pretty soon, and hopefully you guys are doing alright, and keep up the collecting. Alright, see you guys.